Hello and welcome. You are watching us here on a fresh new episode of a fresh new season of Mad About Markets. I'm Manglam Malu. With me as always, Ritu Singh. I'm always in high spirits, uh, jumping around and all of that and stuff. Ritu, but you're particularly excited about this one. Well, I don't know if I'm particularly excited about this one, given how you're always in high spirits. But yes, it's about time. We are talking about the alcohol beverage market in India growing at a phenomenal pace. The show's aging. We've, do, uh, we've done a lot so far. So it's about time that we talk about something which is mature. No specific reason, but just take a look at the Indian alcohol industry. We're seeing a boom of homegrown alcohol beverage makers. You just walk out of your house, get into a restaurant or a nearby bar, you see Indian gins, craft beers, fine wines, whiskey brands. Then in the stock market itself, we have two new players which are likely Sula and Allied Blenders looking to go public. They've already filed their papers. So uh, the industry is certainly in high spirits. The Indian alcohol sector, that's on top of mind. Ritu. As always, we'll begin with the number crunch to put things into context. Now, the global alcoholic beverage market that was valued at $1.5 trillion as of 2021 and it is expected to go all the way to $1.7 trillion by 2027, growing at a compounded annual growth rate of 2.7% between this period. Now, shift the spotlight to India and the per capita consumption of spirits is one of the highest among the top economies, only behind USA for India. But the per capita consumption is far lower when it comes to beer and lower still when it comes to wine. So India predominantly is a spirits market with more than 90% of the alcohol that is consumed in the form of spirits. 90% in the form of spirits. That's more than double of uh, what the global market is. In fact, if you just take a look at the alcohol market globally, it's divided across three major categories of alcoholic beverages. So 44% of which comes in from spirits, which does include whiskey or anything about 40% alcohol, 33% beer, 14% wine and 9% are the others. Now, if you just take a look at India, one of the fastest growing alcohol markets in the world among uh, the top economies, the percent percentage drinking population of the world is close to around 42% and the same number for India is 33%. That's as of now. But going forward, by 2025, this number for the world is likely to settle at around 40% and that for India is likely to grow from 33% to 39%. So not only is it a 6 percentage point growth, mm. it's also growth on a growing population. That's a big market. It is a big market and let's address it with the players who are tapping into this opportunity. We have Shekhar Ramamurthy, the CEO and Executive Vice Chairman of Allied Blenders and Distillers, which is India's third largest Indian-made foreign liquor player in the market and is looking to go public very soon. Also with us is Ankur Jain, the founder and CEO of Bira 91, an Indian craft manufacturer, and Anand Virmani, who is the co-founder and CEO of Now Spirits. He represents the gin manufacturers. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here. Shekhar, let me begin with you. Uh, you know, spirit is the dominant alcohol form for the Indian market. Uh, what is the size of the opportunity according to you okay so uh, uh, when you say alcohol market you're clearly talking both beer and spirits so i represent the spirits part of the business and in spirits uh, and india is largely a spirits market uh, and uh, all spirits just for uh, abundant clarity are sold at 42.8 percent by strength alcohol by alcohol and uh, india is predominantly a whiskey market within spirits you know, about 65% of all uh, spirits sold in the country is whiskey. Traditionally, you know, if you leave out the COVID uh, period, the spirits market has been growing at a steady mid to high single digit number. And our anticipation is that now that COVID is over and the rebalancing of consumption and the markets are going to take place, the steady state growth we again see going back to uh, our mid to high single digit uh, number. All right, so the post-pandemic dip uh, is now slowly normalizing and that's exactly the question for Ankur. Ankur, beverage companies are experiencing a normal summer after two years. What's the consumer response been so far, the current growth rate after two tough pandemic years? You're absolutely right. This is year three and uh, uh, this is the first summer in three summers that we've had, which is pandemic-free. Consumers are going back to bars and restaurants, which is where a lot of beer is consumed. Uh, and industry has recovered back to pre-COVID levels. So we are very hopeful for the uh, upcoming year in terms of volume growth and so on for the industry. 
You know, Anand, what's interesting about the Indian market is that it is dominated by a few players in each of the categories, if you talk about them, which leaves very little share for newer players. You are one of those new players who's trying to make a dent in the market. What is your go-to market strategy to capture more share? And do you think scaling up beyond a point is going to be a challenge? So, yes, it is, of course, terribly difficult. Um, and, and the only real way, the, the proven ways that we've seen people come into the space has been spending a lot of money. And, and I think Bira uh, was a good example of that uh, in a space which is you know, totally dominated by Kingfisher and likes. Uh, Bira was able to come in and really create a niche um, and operate within that niche, which was you know, just premium to, uh, to Kingfisher, et cetera, uh, for a long while until you know, Kingfisher decided to respond and they responded with the likes of Ultra and Ultra Wheat and all that. So. Um, it's certainly very difficult to challenge, uh, you know, the larger players, which is why large players have uh, have traditionally succeeded. And even for us, you know, when we when we joined uh, or when we started uh, the the gin business, it was uh, it was a bit of a daunting one to say that you know we're definitely going to get crowded out by the likes of uh, you know Blue Ribbon or uh, or, God, or Gordons or or, B or Bombay Sapphire for that matter. Um, but I guess because gin, if you look at it from a macro perspective, because gin was only 1%, uh, we were kind of given freedom or, or, you know, people didn't necessarily look at us with that much seriousness until it got to a point where we were already uh, starting to dominate in the, you know, in the bar space and the, and the off-trade space. So um, not so much an M&A, but, uh, but recently, for example, we got, uh, you know, we got, an, we got a minority investment from Diageo or USL. So it's good in that sense that we've been able to kind of build uh, a brand. Well, take your point, uh, Anand, and thank you for narrating the Bira story to us. But hang on, gentlemen, we'll come back to you in just a bit, because now we're going to talk about the alcohol beverage market in India, which is, by the way, the third largest market in the world after China and the United States in terms of volume of actual alcohol content in these beverages. It is also the largest Western spirits market in the world. So from about $21 billion as of 2015, it grew all the way to $33.3 billion in 2020. Then, of course, you saw the pandemic dip and it is now expected to touch $43 billion, close to that, by 2025. This is as per a Technopack study. Now, the market is very much dominated by spirits in which Indian-made foreign liquor contributes close to 68% in value terms overall, followed by beer because of the larger volume, 16%, and country liquor, 13%, followed by the other. So that, in sum and substance, is how Indians consume their alcohol. That's the formal market. So I would assume that country liquor in the informal market would be a lot more. But, you know, that's hmm. a telling stat. Seven out of ten bottles are Indian made foreign liquor. Indian alcohol market has been dominated by the high alcohol content spirits and which is what makes it the third largest market in terms of the total alcohol which is consumed. But if you just take a look at the market, you know, from close to around 727 million cases in 2010, it went all the way up to a billion cases in 2020. There was a bit of a dip, so it's currently close to around 890 million cases and it's likely to go ahead and cross 1.2 billion cases or 12, 29 million cases by 2025 itself. The Indian alco beverage market is projected to grow at a compounded rate of 8% in volumes for the period FY21 to FY25. And how does that compare with the world? 1.5%. Uh, the global volumes will grow by that much in uh, the same period. So the Indian market is actually growing much faster than the global market and is projected to grow even faster. Anand, the market is very much dominated by beer and whiskey spirits, so to say. What is the future of gin in a market like that? It's been growing, but how much can it grow? Really, in terms of the future of gin, obviously, I, you know, you're talking, you're talking to me and I, and I would definitely say that it's, uh, it's looking great. Uh, the reason I say that is because of, uh, you know, the way we've been tracking consumer demand. Uh, it's not going away. I mean, it's not something which, you know, kind of at a peak of interest and, and then kind of dies out. It's, it's something that, uh, that is real, that is, uh, that is consistently growing year on year. Um, and, and we're seeing growth across the market. Okay, from gin, let's go to beer again. And Ankur, you know, uh, we heard from Anand earlier how Bira disrupted the market, forcing Kingfisher to come up with new brands. How did a young company like yours get the brand building right and distribution right to be able to capture the market? And what's been your go-to strategy? 
So uh, our strategy has been to really focus on a few markets, but get to double digit shares in those markets as quickly as possible. Uh, while we are present in over 30 states, almost 80% uh, of our revenue comes from uh, eight states and we, uh, and that's deliberate and that's by design. So now that the industry is so big and so is the potential, what are the players in the market doing or what are they making? As per Statista, the total revenue in the alcoholic drinks market in India amounted to close to around $47.5 billion in 2022, or that's what it's likely to be. It is expected to grow annually by roughly 9% high single digit, as uh, Shekhar spoke about, to cross $61 billion by 2025. So that's the kind of market that we're looking at in mm. India. Well, the Indian spirits market is controlled by the top two spirits companies of the world. We have Diageo as well as Perno Rica. The top three players in the spirits market control close to 50% of the market. And that's actually you know, the case in all the other segments as well. The top three beer uh, players in the market control close to 80% of the beer market by volume. And similar is the case for wines as well. If you take a look at the wines, the top three players, which is Sula, Grover as well as Fratelli, they have 80% of the wine market by value. There is a long tail of players in each of these segments with regional strong players, especially in the spirits market. And then there is a plenty of players in the listed space too. Of course, the biggest of them all we know, United Bre Bre Breweries as well as United Spirits. We have Tilaknagar Industries, GM Breweries from the broader markets as well. Radiko Ghetan has been making a lot of strides. And then we have Associated Alcohol and Breweries too. Two new players looking to go public and we have uh, uh, one of them with us. Shekhar is with us. That's right, Shekhar. Actually, you know, you've only filed your papers for a 2,000 crore rupee public offering. Uh, could you tell us what the timelines are and what your plans on that front are? Yes, indeed, uh, we are seeking to raise about 2,000 crores. Half of it will be offered for sale by the promoters and half of it will be a fresh issue, which will come into the company. Uh, the time frame is difficult to say because at this point of time, you know, SEBI uh, takes between 75 to 90 days to come back with its queries and uh, and we have to respond to it. And that, that is the uh, time that we are in right now. Thereafter, once we get a go ahead from SEBI, uh, we will evaluate uh, the situation and uh, file the IPO. Uh, the RHP uh, appropriately. Shekhar, you've been an old hand. You've worked at uh, some of the bigger companies as well in the past. So tell us about your ability to gain market share with the company that you're in currently. Is it getting tougher at the premium end and more commoditized at the lower end? What's your strategy? Uh, so it's a business of brands. So to be competitive, you we need to see the trends. We need to talk to consumers. We need to keep our brands uh, refreshed and uh, desirable to consumers. So... I always say that uh, a company is only as successful as consumers allow it to be. So we need to be there. We need to be constantly innovating, investing in our brands. Obviously, we need to have infrastructure, need to have capacities, and all that is a given. Anybody can do that. But a successful company is the one which has brands. And you mentioned about uh, whether it's becoming commodities or uh, you know, no brand is a commodity at, at no price level. All right, take your point, Shekhar. In fact, we'll take a short break on that note. On the other side of this short break, we will discuss the yays and the mays of the alcohol industry. And as always, we'll ask the bigger qu a question, and that is, is there enough opportunity in India's alcohol industry despite regulatory challenges? That and more in just a bit.